welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth today. If you're a new to, newbie to the channel and to these videos, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining and I hope you find content on this channel that you enjoy. If you're a returning visitor, once again, thank you so much for your uh, ongoing support. Just a reminder for those people that aren't aware or who may have forgotten, when it comes to the angels, we always um, call on or invoke the creator when we're working with angels. We call on the creator first and follow up uh, by calling on a specific angel for a specific healing purpose or blessing or whatever now the other thing too is of course we have the angel playlist now the reason I've got the angel playlist up is because not only do I talk about my personal journey and getting to know angels and getting involved with them I also have up content that is not um you know what I mean? There's always something that we can learn. And so I say that any of the information I give to you is not comprehensive. It can always be added to. Um, there's different people's experiences. So this is based on my experiences and I invite and welcome people to put their own comments up. Now, before I get into the content today, because we will be talking about a meteor who is the angel of truth, a couple of pointers to make there. When we speak of angels, we use names that we're comfortable with. I call the Angel of Truth a meteor because I saw it somewhere once upon a time and it feels right to me. Uh, you may call the Angel of Truth by another name and that's okay. I use names because I like to personalize the connection between myself and the energy or light being that I'm working with. So uh, don't feel that you have to use the name a meteor use the name that you feel comfortable with or the one that you know the angel of truth by just a reminder as well when it comes to the images that i use these are ones that i've created using ai uh, it's a bit restrictive but i like to create them um, with images of bird feathers and wings now of course realistically this is not how angels generally appear they if you're lucky enough to have the gifts of clairvoyance most people are going to see angels as a sphere of light that has got a few wings to it it's a bit different to the human aura the human aura is a light aura that is egg shaped the angelic aura is cylindrical um, taller thinner than the human aura generally spe uh, speaking if we're talking about proportions anyway um, so anyway let's kick on now and talk directly about what we can learn from angel a meteor so as with all angels her goal of creation is to reconnect us to the creator um, and with our divinity our higher self aspect or what some people refer to as the eternal uh, the names that we use as descriptors are really not that important either as long as you understand the intention um, but the descriptors from my perspective they support the capacity um, for me to feel comfortable with what it is that I'm doing. It's about developing a bit of understanding. So you would use the terms and names that you're comfortable with as well. Now, more specifically for Angela Meteor, her goal of creation is to support each one of us to uncover the truth within any of our experiences, all of our experiences actually, and the truth of our desires by digging into the feelings that lay beneath these layers of denial um, and suppression and repression that we adopt as we go through our life. Um, now, as we work through these personal truths that are based on our experiences usually or our understandings and beliefs, um, so we work through them and then we can express and communicate it and it becomes defined as our personal knowledge or our personal understandings. So when it comes to the angelic orders, a meteor is one of the second order manifesting angels. And these particular angels or this demographic, they are um, what is referred to as white light angels. Um, and I discussed that in the hierarchy video, but basically their aura is white, but the way they differentiate from the presentations of other angels is that they have a golden body type shape within um, the white light if you're lucky enough to actually see it manifest. Now, it might not be the same for you. I put that disclaimer in there. I'm interested, as I say, to hear your experiences, but these are my understandings, um, that they will have a golden type body. The body is less wispy. Some um, angel auras are quite wispy and the second order manifesting angels are more substantial, shall we say, better defined. And they have this emanation of white light that comes from their hands 
uh, heart area and the face. And of course, being angels, they've got uh, wings on their aura, but not bird wings. Okay. And part of their task is to add vividness, vividness and details to bring visions that are projected to them from the heart angels. And these are your desires that you're attempting to construct or manifest on earth. Um, what else can I say about them? Well, not much really, except, um, for example, when we talk about a meteor's role within the order, you know, because you've got other angels within this order, which includes the angel of beauty and the angel of knowledge. Uh, but when we're talking about truth, we're talking about being able to see the truth in all situations. And this isn't limited and restricted to seeing the truth. It's also about seeing dishonesty or incongruence, um, the difference between um, a person's words and their actions because when we interact with other people if they are incongruent you know the person that smiles says all the right things but we can sense that all is not as it appears then that's an indicator that that person is either out of touch with their emotions or that they struggle to communicate the truth of their feelings because they've got fears or unresolved issues or whatever, which of course that's their journey, that's for them to work through. But from our perspective, if we're making uh, healthy decisions, we need to be honest with ourselves as well and be able to identify those people who we interact with and establish are they going to support us to achieve our divine plan um, are they part of our support network are we being divinely guided to interact with this person and we might be as well okay because just because the person is dishonest or out of touch with their feelings doesn't mean that we have not been divinely inspired to connect with them because they may have some form of information to give to us that we can say thank you very much you know nod move on but if we keep these uh, dishonest and potentially unethical people in our life around us then it has potential to interrupt um, achieving that divine plan that we're all walking our path for so discernment is a key part of the benefit or blessing if you like of understanding truth so I'm going to try and whip this along and be a bit fast because we all know, well, if you've watched a few of my videos now, I do tend to go down the rabbit warren and take a bit longer than I intended. My aim is always to try and keep these under half an hour. Anyway, the wisdom that is shared by Meteor is that the process of understanding truth involves tapping into exactly what truth means and understanding it. And the message is that there is not only layers of truth, there are variations to truth for example right so this is all part of why it would be advisable to withhold judgment a universal truth is basically a eternal truth that resonates with our soul it brings peace and harmony it feels wonderful it feels true it feels peaceful and then there is what we call knowledgeable truth uh, knowledgeable truth is the information that we learn as we go through our studies that we store through our, in our memories and these truths actually aren't reliable sorry scientists you know why it's not reliable this is because they can change and they change when new information comes to light now if you've at all studied and and i certainly know as a university graduate that everything that we study and we're taught at university we have to provide references for and the references um are out, considered to be out of date if they're more than five years old because there's always new research being conducted and this has to be included in anybody's uh, what we call professional beliefs you may as well say knowledgeable truth and when we're speaking from a place of knowledgeable truth right or this studied learning we're actually drawing from our memory it's a memory recall thing it's learned it's taught it's not actually experienced it may have value it may not right for example i'll give you uh, an example of say um, diet we all know that oranges contain vitamin c and we all know that um, vitamin c can be used to treat scurvy um, we might, unless there's further studies done, conclude that the only way to treat scurvy is by using the vitamin C from oranges, because that's what we know. However, if we know that vitamin C can be found in other citrus sources, such as limes and lemons and all the rest of it, then um, if we were going to limit ourselves just to the orange concept, we're not really fully informed, if that makes sense. 
experiential excuse me as i swallow experiential truth is different um it's the knowledge that we obtain through our life and our learning and it is very personal right it can also our personal truths or our experiential truth can create biases so it's not always reliable either especially if we jump to conclusions and you will know because i think we're all guilty of this at different times in our lives um it's kind of like oh yeah you know um, don't need a crystal ball to see where this pathway is going i've seen it all before and this is how it's going to pan out especially if we're looking at somebody else's situation however the difference is that everybody is different everybody's unique and just because it happened to us that way doesn't mean that it's going to happen to other people that way and the other thing is it doesn't mean that just because it happened to us once that it's going to happen again and it also doesn't mean that just because it happened to us that it's happened like that to everybody if that makes sense i think we might go into that a bit more in the video so it's this experiential truth or the personal truths that we as individuals have a responsibility to work through and this is a healing and a healing of perspectives um, and we would call upon the support of creator and a meteor to uncover the truth now this is because as i touched upon before whatever biases we've got they can warp our perceptions of the truth right and they can block and prevent us from experiencing joy and love not only with the people around us but these biases and overwhelming negative feelings they can prevent us they act as this barrier for connecting with the divine because um, having an open heart means carrying emotions of love and joy if you like the lighter feelings the nicer feelings we have to be able to carry these in our heart and if our heart is blocked by biases then it's going to really stop that connection or at least impact on it in quite um quite expansive ways not to mention that obviously life is a lot um duller when we have no joy in our life you know people start to feel worthless and life has no meaning so or doesn't feel like it has meaning for those people so when we work with the angels of truth the idea is to bring our conscious awareness or bring to conscious awareness any barriers so that we can actually release them and create a space within ourselves and our own heart to carry more love more joy and more light I'm going to try and break this down and simplify it the bottom line is that when we have a bias this is because every situation that or event that we find ourselves in is going to uh, trigger an emotional response at that time and that emotional response is going to be either pleasant or unpleasant desirable or undesirable and it's going to create a belief around that experience now this belief can be positive or negative okay and it's not actually always that we wear negative blinkers i put the goggles on here because i couldn't find um, an image where you know a person puts on their if you i don't think this is just an australian saying they've got their rose tinted glasses on or they're wearing their love goggles and they're not seeing the truth that lies directly in front of them so we can blind ourselves with our own biases um now i guess if we had to wear blinders or blinkers love goggles are probably better because at least we're seeing the beauty of everybody but the reality is that by having these goggles on we might actually take ourselves into um, situations that are unsafe the other aspect of having um, emotional goggles or blinkers on is that if we look at everything through this perspective of um, I've been betrayed and we're guarded and then um, guarded or reactive you know I'd rather be on the attack than on the defense you know then our beliefs and perhaps warp perceptions are going to dictate our behaviors and create situations for ourselves that are undesirable and that can compound and uh, escalate any negative feelings uh, or conditions such as our anxieties um, if we've got depression and trauma you know or the other scenario with this is if we've experienced a lot of betrayal and we start to expect that every human being and I know that you will have seen this where people turn around and say you know I, I'm comfortable with my dogs and cats but I don't interact with people stuff like that 
So they start to self-isolate as part of protecting themselves from what they fear to be further harm or pain. There's so many scenarios that we could draw upon on how having these um, emotional biases interrupt our interactions with people. It can actually really get a person to the point where they actually don't interact with other people at all because they are so frightened of being further um, further betrayed, if you like, or further treated badly. Now, the point being that these are actually unhealthy behaviours because we as humans and as souls, we're all part of this greater big picture and we have to, if we haven't learned the skills yet, that's part of the pathway, I believe. Okay, people might think differently. Um, I'm not saying, by the way, that I live to all of these ideals. I'm just saying that these are my understandings and they're their aspirations that I strive to because I know within myself I certainly do isolate a bit as well um, but I still believe that we as human beings are designed to connect with other people for the greater good of the planet now this self-isolation and all the rest of it will continue to manifest until such time as we dig deep and unearth our true feelings about a situation so for the person perhaps shall we say who isolates because they're scared of x y and z it's like why why do i hold this fear and really unearth it but we'll talk about that in a minute too on a different slide so using the idea of isolation and avoiding experiences that make us or that we would say make us feel bad is actually where we're externalizing our feelings it's a form of self-rejection um, because feelings actually are not external they lie within us um, and when we refuse to look at these feelings we're rejecting them and they are our messengers feelings are messengers and those feelings will stay with us until we take a really good look at it and they create an energetic current and this is the problem for those of us that are that might be in self-denial as opposed to accepting our feelings you know because the light body or our bodies are made of light and vibration and all of our emotions will manipulate the vibration and when I say manipulate it can either speed it up or slow it down and that has the capacity to manipulate our future experiences so if we're repressing emotions and denying them and keeping them locked down and rejecting ourselves um, then it can result in not only biases but worst case scenarios a hardness or bitterness and this hardness and bitterness can come across in our relationships and foster separation and division as opposed to unity and connection and so therefore it is extremely important that we accept these emotions and feelings and, and uncover the messages that they're trying to tell us and this is where the saying of truth comes in and also the sayings of embrace your shadow because when we um, accept all of our feelings for what they are and work through the uncomfortable ones then we're able to raise our vibration to at the very least self -accept acceptance and open up to more light and love in our life so the idea here is to reflect upon to unearth the pain to find out what the pain is about get to the truth and face the truth of situations as part of healing um, when we do this in an unsupported way it can be more difficult um, because quite often the pain is buried really deep down in the subconscious and it human beings are naturally wired to avoid pain if you think about it you know we come close to the fire we feel the heat and we'll withdraw fair enough it sounds like a smart idea but the bottom line is that when it comes to emotional pain we don't even recognize that we're actually avoiding it a lot of the time we just start to feel that sensation and then we back away so the idea of unearthing pain um, emotional pain is sensory as well it is about exploring the initial sensation and becoming aware of when we're actually starting to feel an emotion and it can be going through multiple layers especially if there's a long history of recurring trauma um, there can be a lot to unearth and 
for people that um, have been living with trauma for a long time, for example, um, these behaviours of withdrawal and burial suppression and repression can become such a normal reflexive response that they can actually forget what it is about an experience that was the painful part that they're avoiding. So the easiest way to actually unearth this stuff is in the first instance, so I'll give you a couple of tips here, is to see where it feels. When you start to feel uncomfortable, not whether you feel frightened, whether you feel whatever, that first sensation of, hmm, something's not right here, I'm sensing um, words don't match, you know, if we're talking about other people, I'm sensing, I'm sensing that the words aren't matching the behaviours. That's the first example, shall we say. So sometimes that feeling or thought can come from our past experience. That's our implicit bias. But if we take a look at that feeling, then we, what we do is we go, OK, I've got this thought, I've got this sensation. Where in my body does it sit? Um, most likely it will be sitting in the red chakra or the orange chakra. This is why I encourage people to do their awareness of chakras. Um, and then you would look at what is the meaning behind that chakra. Now, I'm hazarding a guess and just saying right here that if this were the case, I would imagine that this pain is actually sitting more so in your orange chakra because most stuff is fear-based um, when we've got discomfort. It's, we've, we're frightened of something occurring and then we have to actually identify is this fear based in any form of reality or is it just a fear that we have based on an experience? Now, I also would direct you at this point as part of this emotional awareness that we have videos on the um, playlist for, ooh, I'll have to put the link in at the end of it, but I've got um, mainstream, because I'm a social worker, I've put up some mainstream techniques as well for working with emotions and cognitions, which is our perceptions and that kind of stuff as part of healing um, under scientific evidence-based ways, shall we say. So anyway, the other thing that we would look at is what we tend to do, our our reflexive behaviours that we have um, adopted throughout. Sorry about all the ums, I'm having an um day today. All right, it is to look at what we actually do when we feel uncomfortable. If we're in a situation and you might think, well, yeah, I smoke or I have a drink or whatever, but I don't use it to numb pain. Well, I guarantee you that if you start looking at the motivations for why you smoke or drink alcohol or why you might gamble or why you might use prescriptive medication, if we're looking at causality, there's going to be some kind of pain that was involved at the beginning. So, uh, for example, if you want to look at why you smoke, then take a look at what was happening in your life at the time you commenced. What were you trying to numb? For other people, it might simply be a case of if you're in a space where you really feel fine and you've got nothing to complain about in your life and you feel that, um, no, everything's hunky-dory for you, then take a look at what you actually did the last time you felt emotionally overwhelmed because that will reveal to you um, from a space of clear vision how you respond to emotional distress. You know, what did you do in the past to manage the pain? Um, did you work through it? Or um, was it a healthy outlet or was it an, an unhealthy outlet? Because I actually do know there are some people who once they feel uncomfortable or pain, and it can be anger that can be the pain as well. Once they start to get angry, they might, instead of lashing out and giving somebody a thump, you know, which would not be the advisable course of action if you get upset, um, they might actually go down the gym and do a workout. This might be part of how they manage their discomfort and pain. But at the same time, while that's releasing, that is also um, suppressing and avoiding the pain or avoiding responding to the pain and creating a better outcome. But it, I've got to make the point here too that if this is how a person manages their emotions because the activity of doing the exercise at the gym, for example, that is a pain management strategy. And that also can be a space for reflection while they're doing it, while they think about problem solutions and how they can create from this experience something positive. So it's looking, really giving a full assessment of 
pain, pain management, awareness, understanding, and digging very deep. And I hope you like the video of the puppy. Medication, by the way, um, is also a method of pain management and suppression of emotions. But I want to make the point here that if you have been prescribed medication, I would not at any time uh, advise a person to withdraw from their medication unless they do it under medical supervision um, because of the fact that anything that we take into our mouth orally as a prescriptive medication does have a physiological impact on the body. And so therefore, when we start taking it out, we have to go through another uh, physiological rebalance. And when you're talking about emotional stuff, you must actually make sure you do it in safe ways, okay? So you don't stop your meds cold turkey. I'd be irresponsible if I suggested that you do. So when we're unpacking the pain and taking a look at the pain and really exploring it, you know, this is facing the truth of our feelings and where we're able to take these actions, proactive ones that I talked about before. But at the same time, we have a responsibility to ourselves and other people to be honest with ourselves. And when we're looking truthfully and facing the truth, sometimes this means acknowledging that we have done things that have compounded um, unhealthy or unhelpful situations. This is not always the case, okay? I want to make that clear. For people that have been victims, perhaps of um, abuse or whatever scenarios, um, you haven't done anything to deserve this, okay? But the truth for other people in other situations might be that there are things we could have done differently. Um, there are things that we might have done if we were paying attention um, that may have led to a different conclusion. Um, so I just want to make clear again, this doesn't mean to say that we are to blame for um, things that happen, because especially if we're talking about relationships, it takes two to make or break a relationship. But what it means is being able to look impartially at each of the situations that have caused us grief and to be honest and acknowledge you know perhaps areas that we could have grown it could be that you know my communication was abrupt i have no filter um i actively contributed to the chain of events that unfolded and it can be reaching the conclusion that you know well actually while i could have improved myself i didn't deserve the outcome that occurred right because quite often that's the case as well um because you know, life is a series of opportunities for growth. These are the challenges that we talk about in life and none of us avoid them. Um, I think a really good explanation is that I'll put my hand up and say boundaries. I didn't know about boundaries for a long time. Okay, so sometimes the only thing we may have been really unwise about was being uninformed. It might have been that we knew nothing about boundaries. We didn't understand that a person was putting a boundary in place and we inadvertently crossed it. And that may have led to unhappy consequences. So the learning curve there, at least in my instance, was to learn boundaries within relationships and how to respect other people's boundaries and how to put my own boundaries in around how I would like other people to treat me and what I can accept, uh, can accept from others as far as having people come into my inner circle. We've got a video up on that as well. Okay. And sometimes when we're doing our reflections and taking responsibility for our actions, we might actually reach the conclusion that uh, there was an event that transpired uh, where we felt compelled to act in a certain way. We could be following our own inner guidance with this, but it had unhappy consequences for us. Um, but the point is, we reached the conclusion that, you know, I don't understand why this happened the way it did or whatever but at the end of the day i actually do believe that if i was in the same situation in the future i would still act the same way but instead of um carrying a judgment towards the person that may have hurt us we then just go we're able to release it i mean ideally we would be able to understand and say well you know i understand now in hindsight they had x y and z happening that doesn't always happen sometimes it's simply a case of going you know what actually this person is where they're meant to be on their path right now and their journey is their journey my journey is my journey and i think that is probably the best way to manage uh, relationships perhaps with narcissists actually which is a really overused word these days 
other times, you know, when we're doing our reflections, we might find that there's something that actually we didn't do very well and that we actually feel a bit of grief about that we have done something to somebody and hurt them terribly and we feel really bad. Now, if that is the case, it still becomes about you have you know what I mean that honesty being honest okay I did what I did it wasn't the best thing I could have done and then there becomes this well how do I rectify the situation ideally you're going to find that person you're going to apologize to them um, and the risk is that they may not accept your apology and then you're going to have to live with that as well um, the other problem might be if the person has passed over and transitioned you might be able to do soul speak and apologize to the person. I'm very confident that if the person has transitioned, they will forgive you because they understand we are all um, souls and humans in progress. But there has to be this being honest with ourselves and releasing guilt and shame because these feelings of guilt and shame are a massive barrier but that doesn't mean to say so what we see in a modern world or certainly I see in a modern world is people that are basically loud and proud shameless and guilt-free that's not helpful to them either okay um, because they will eventually have to face the responsibility or the consequences of their actions and that's karma and that might be something I talk about in the yarning uh, karma and the life review. Now there's certainly health benefits involved with facing the truth and unpacking your truth because when we repress our emotions it's exhausting it can be very fatiguing and draining to be continually hiding how we feel and trying to modify our reactions to accommodate other people's needs or whatever as opposed to being able to speak freely honestly um, from our space of truth in kind and loving ways so as we heal we're able to uh, communicate more effectively more subtly more honestly and that becomes far more energizing you're going to have more energy you're going to experience better health uh, outcomes um, if you've had mood instability you'll find that your mood will stabilize and you'll have a better um, grasp of how to respond to situations rather than react to them um, if you've got a history of suffering from headaches you can experience um, well in my observations uh, people have less headaches if they've had stomach upsets because that's associated with obviously unrest um, there'll be relief with their people with anxiety and illness and even uh, trauma injuries uh, I would expect I have to be very careful not to make claims but I would expect that there will be a reduction of symptoms even if um, well, probably, actually, potentially the symptoms might disappear completely. So if irritability and intolerance have been a problem for you, you're going to find these disappear as well. You'll certainly be a lot calmer. And that has a flow on effect to relationships because they start to improve. And this is because, okay, this is all grounded in the, the fact that it's because it feels more natural to be honest and truthful in conversations and with our interactions with the other people you know we become more aware not just of how we feel but we become more sensitive um, to other people even in um, those moments that appear to be insignificant or unimportant we just become more aware more sensitive in positive ways not sensitive as in oversensitive and reacting to stuff considerate kinder these are the behaviours that um, end up coming about and these offer better health outcomes. So an example of this self-awareness is, you know, when somebody asks you to do something for them, you're able to recognise instantly within yourself if you're comfortable or not comfortable doing what it is that they ask. And not only that, you can identify whether or not you're prepared to actually go beyond your comfort zones um, and whether or not that will involve denying yourself and your own needs. So how would I explain this? Right, I'll use an example that will actually bring a bit of humour and bring the numerology content to this. What I have observed for people that have got a ruling number of three is they inherently really want to please people. They want them to be happy. It's important to them that the people around them be happy. Now, what they will tend to do is um, within their relationships, goodness me, actually, 
I'm going to use self as an example for this because I have um, I can put my hand up and say I'm guilty of this because I actually recognize and I know my son has got a ruling number of a three and I've got a bit of a wicked sense of humor I do apologize in advance for that and I know he's not going to watch this video so I can be at liberty to mention this oh oh that was exciting I'm so sorry I had to stop in the middle of recording because as I was speaking I saw somebody walking up the pathway for you um, as you watch this you may not be aware that I'm recording this on Mother's Day and there was I talking about my son and how naughty I am sometimes and uh, he sent me Mother's Day flowers so that was a wonderful surprise that's really nice anyway going back to it what I do have done and I try not to do it I try to exhibit a bit of self-control these days is he is the kind of person that you could turn around and say usually um hey mate because i'm australian that's what we say would you mind uh perhaps getting the shears and pruning x and y now he hates gardening now i can guarantee you i will get the side eye and then you will watch him suck it up and what we call suck it up take the breath and just not say anything and you know perhaps the nostrils might lift or whatever and then off he'll go and he'll do as I ask but he knows I'm taking the mickey out of him and um, then I might do that again because he just you know this is part of his personality trait this is and I have seen this with people with a ruling three so many times they will go out and self-sacrifice as part of uh making somebody else happy it's something they really don't like doing but they'll do it anyway so that becomes a level of self-denial rather than turn around and say you know i hate gardening right i cannot stand it mum don't make me do it um they will just go and do it because they want you to be happy however right the big disclaimer on this is what generally will happen is um not so much with me but with his sisters because his sisters do it as well i've obviously been a poor role, role model um they will take the mickey out of him and then they will take it too far they won't know when to back off because they don't have that level of self-awareness and then he will become really angry at them for taking the mickey out of him and and taking it too far so this is where we talk about being honest and open within relationships i wouldn't have a problem certainly if he turned around and just looked at me and said oh come on mum you know i'm not doing the gardening uh, but he will actually i used a bad example by saying the secretaries he will use the secretaries for me because it's difficult for me some things are challenging and the point being that i as his mother anyway and his sisters really by not respecting his boundaries we're being a bit rude and it's okay for him to stand up and say what he will and won't do and he has the right to have those boundaries respected as well and this is the same with everybody else but i think when there's loving relationships combined with self-awareness and open communication things tend to be a lot more peaceful so the best time to actually work through emotions is when there's been an ending and especially an ending that was not one that you were able to um, predict shall we say but one that maybe took you by surprise and one that certainly created a large and overwhelming emotional response for you. Now, these times, of course, can be extremely challenging and testing. And during these times of um, emotional, you know, because we're talking about emotional distress here, there may be times that a person feels like giving up, you know, and it's at these times, it's really extremely really extremely definitely extremely important to hold faith and know that as you wade through these dark times it's like being in a dark tunnel it has a time limit on it and there will be a breakthrough there is a light at the end of the tunnel um, and it is a matter of respecting and accepting all the feelings as we go through this process that means that anger you know if you're feeling angry um, at the universe even, um, angry at other people, angry at the world, um, tears, sorrow, sadness, whatever these emotions are to you, it's about feeling the pain and moving through it. If you want to cry, you cry. Let the tears out. Don't hold them back. Don't force them back in. If you feel angry, 
um, it's important to find a safe release, you know. If that means going and seeing a therapist, go and see a therapist. If it means writing down your angry feelings um, as a form of release, then do that to help you work through this anger and pain until you can see clearly the underpinning uh, thought or belief and the resistance, what it's about. Now, I'm not going to try and offer um explanations about the grieving process okay if somebody around you has died and you're feeling angry at the universe this is actually a good one to write a letter because you can see a therapist they may be able to help you uh, process and unpack your emotions in regard to the loss of a loved one but as you shift through the pain just remember there is a light on the other side and it's about transformation it's transforming pain into purpose meaning passion so let's take a look at that uh, oh also i forgot to say during these times when you're in the tunnel pray 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 invoke call on the creator the angels to help you to release the pain in positive ways we'll talk about invocation shortly but hold faith um you will be able to endure it probably sounds crazy if you're in this spot right now but you will in a eventually come through it okay hang in there so transformation is going to occur once we've accepted the truth of our feelings the good feelings um, the ugly feelings, the intense, the subtle. And when we expand on our capacity to feel emotions, regardless of what they are, we will also expand our capacity to feel joy, unconditional love, um, states such as sensuality, gratitude, forgiveness of self and others. Um, and we'll be able to feel the eternal self aspect um, and the creator energy. But because they have an amazingly intense energy our bodies actually can't tolerate their high vibrational levels when we're bogged down with emotional blockages of the dark emotions and i say dark not in a bad way i just mean dark as in heavy um as i've said before the aura is about a cellular atomic type vibration and when we talk about light it's about movement and like a shadow if you like the, the Actually, I'll do a whole yarning session on that again. I'll revisit that in yarning, um, what we mean by light and vibration and dark because it's not bad. But anyway, the essence of transformation is to find any dark areas within ourselves that are bogged down um, with these emotions such as anger, anger and sorrow and sadness and to replace those with feelings of love and light and joy, peace, all of this kind of stuff. Now, this is what some people call embracing the shadow self. So to wrap this up, because it's become a long video, as I feared, um, when we're doing invocations, obviously call upon the creator first and then the angel that you want to work with. Um, I've put some suggestions here as part of helping you to tap into your own truth, personal truth. And um, please do leave comments of any experiences that you may have. I'll leave you to read these suggestions in your own time. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for being part of the journey. I hope today's content has been beneficial. I invite you to leave your comments, your experiences, your thoughts, beliefs or whatever, and we can have a conversation below. And then I shall catch you on a new day. Um, have a blessed day, blessed week. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye for now.